If you're new to my channel, uh, my videos are about being an instrumentation and electrical technician and basically what it is as a career path. My videos are geared towards people who are in school for engineering technology or, you know, mechatronics. You know, there's, there's different AS degrees that lead towards instrumentation as a career and I just kind of talk about it and I talk about my experience as a technician and, uh, you know, what it's like and how do you find a job. So anyways, uh, I'm going to focus on the first job in this video because I have a lot of questions about this. It can be a little bit difficult to get established as an instrumentation and control technician. And by being established, I mean get that first job, get a couple years of experience. Maybe you have a degree, maybe you're currently in school getting your AS degree, but you know, you have to take a couple steps before you're established. And then once you're established, generally speaking, it's pretty easy to find a job. The reason is there's not a lot of instrumentation and control or instrumentation and electrical technicians. Uh, I know me personally, when I went to school, I had never even heard of that. I had no idea what it was. Uh, I got talked into it by an advisor at Palm Beach State College in Florida. So anyways, um, yeah. There's a bit of a barrier to getting in to become an instrumentation technician because there's a lot of engineers, there's a lot of electricians, there are not a lot of instrumentation and electrical technician, electri electrical technicians, and that's kind of like a hybrid between an electrician and an, uh, an electrical engineer. Instrumentation technician, you're gonna focus on sensors, calibrations, troubleshooting control systems, um, a lot of times you'll be expected to either know or learn some programming languages, some automation, you know, control equipment. That's what the job is. And these companies have a very hard time filling these positions. From my experience, I, I know, you know, whenever I look at the jobs that are posted, a lot of them have been posted for six months or a year because there's not a big pool of people that do this type of work. But on the flip side of that, if you just go into school and get your two-year degree, you may find it challenging to get that first job. And I wanna talk about what you can do to become established as an instrumentation technician. First thing I wanna talk about is choosing your degree. Where I went, there were, they had companies that had like, you know, a partnership with the college and they would take these people that were in school and give them a, give them an internship and it wasn't just one company there were like three or four different companies we had a partnership with the power company uh, we had a power uh, partnership with the water utilities in the area then there was a aerospace company that was partnering with the school and there were other like random uh, random companies and that was a result of the guy who ran the program program having established uh, you know he had established relationships in industry and he knew people and he stayed in touch with people. So that school, Palm Beach State College in Florida, it was really easy to get an internship as a tech while I was in school. And you know, pretty much everyone in there had the same experience. You go to school, you start school, you prove that you're, you know, you're serious about it. You want to be in the program. And that guy would help us get jobs just to start out. So my first job, I was making $19 an hour as an instrumentation and control uh, trainee. And I did that for a year. And then I got a full-time position as instrumentation and electrical technician at a different water plant. I was making pretty good money. It was a full-time benefits. It was a real job. And I was able to get that job when I was still in school because I had a year of experience. Other degree, degree programs might not have that established. So the first thing you wanna do is when you're looking at a degree, find out if that's, you know, something they have going on. And you're gonna to wanna to talk to people that are involved in the program you're looking at. Maybe it's an engineering technology degree, maybe a mechatronics degree, maybe a electronics degree. You gotta kinda of gotta look around at the school, you know, read the descriptions of the different degrees, and then reach out to either full-time professors or the program chairs. You don't wanna to talk to the Dean of Admissions. You wanna to go to a more local level and just talk to the people that are really involved in that program and see what they think about it. See if they can help you get an internship. See if there's established paths in that regard. 
All right, so the next piece of advice is if you go to the degree program and you figure out that there's not really established uh, internships or training programs or a career path within the program, there's other things you can do. Maybe you're in school right now, maybe you're about to finish and you're freaking out because you can't find a job. Um, I would say the next best thing is find the low hanging fruit. Find the instrumentation and electrical instrumentation and control automation technician, electrical technician. Find the jobs that are posted, that have been posted for a while that they cannot fill. And obviously the jobs that they can't fill are gonna be the lower paying jobs. And um, so that would be the next best thing. If you can't find an internship or a training program while you're in school, go out and look for the jobs that are paying you know, a low wage. And that's gonna change depending on what region you're in. If you're in California where rent is super high, maybe it's the jobs that are posted for 35 bucks an hour. If you're in Florida or Ohio, maybe it's the jobs that are posted for $25 an hour. But you wanna, you know, look for the jobs that you know they're not gonna fill. Um, another good resource is talk to technical staffing agencies. That is a huge resource for people that are, you know, trying to become established because, you know, these companies, they can't fill the position. They go to the staffing agency. They say, hey, we'll give you, you know, $5,000 or whatever. If you can fill these positions, and then, you know, these recruiters, these staffing agency people, they get paid a huge commission if they can fill the position. So that person is going to really want to get you a job because if they can find you a job, they're gonna get a, you know, $1,000, $2,000 in their pocket. I don't know, you know the actual exact numbers, but I'm sure it's something like that. So that's a great resource is low hanging fruit, instrumentation and control jobs or technical staffing agencies. So that's number two. That's the next best thing to getting an internship when you're in college. And again, I wanna reiterate, once you become established, it will not be difficult to find a job. I mean, I can only speak from my own experience, but you know, living in South Florida and living in Cleveland, Ohio, the market for instrumentation technicians is basically this. They have the jobs posted. They've had the jobs posted forever. They can't fill the position. And that I've seen that kind of across the board. And then once in a while, you'll see these jobs pop up that are like really high paying they get filled pretty quick, but all the other ones, they just can't fill the position. All right, so the third and worst piece of advice, but it will still work if the other two don't work, is go out and get a job that is not an instrumentation technician, not an electrical technician, but something that's closely related. Again, I would suggest using technical staffing agencies in your area as a resource. When you go on LinkedIn, um, I didn't say this earlier, look on LinkedIn and Google Jobs and ZipRecruiter. Uh, those are good resources. There's more, but um, when you're looking for these types of jobs, those, um, those job boards, those job board apps and stuff, they're really good. It's a lot different than when you're going for entry level positions and there's a million applicants. Because you know, before I did this, I had that experience and I'd go on Indeed or whatever and like I'd put out these resumes and I'd never get a call back. That is not what's gonna happen with this. You, you know, you fill out an application, you're gonna get a call back. Um, but yeah, so the third and worst piece of advice is find a job that it's not the job you want, but it's somewhat similar. This can be a maintenance technician. This can be a wiring technician. You can work um, at one of these big automation companies, just like, wiring stuff up and you know building their automation products that's not the job you want you don't want to get stuck in that but that's a good stepping stone where if you have the degree and oh i worked at this automation company doing panel building for a year i mean that's a lot better than just a degree so that's going to be your third and worst option but i promise you it will still work um and it's just experience because the thing is these companies who have all this complicated automated machinery, all these automation product project, all these automation products, they have all these instruments that need calibrated, all these control systems that need preventative maintenance done on them. If they hire someone right out of school who's never physically done the work, that's going to be a pretty big leap and it's going to require a lot of training. I'm not saying it can't happen. 
but a lot of times these companies will only have, you know, it's not like you're gonna go in there and there's gonna be 50 people at the company and you're gonna say, oh, these are the other, you know, 15 instrumentation technicians. No, it doesn't work like that. There's gonna be, it's gonna be just you or it's gonna be you and one or two other people, maybe three. So you need to have some experience. I'm not saying you have to know the job. You don't have to know the whole job when you go in, but you have to have the fundamentals. You have to be able to do critical thinking, troubleshooting. You need to be able to teach yourself. Um, you know, you need to be a self-starter, but just having any bit of experience that's related to the job will help. And um, so yeah, look at jobs like electronics technician, uh, do assembly work at an automation company, field service technician that has some automation and electrical in it, uh, maintenance technician that has some automation and electrical in it. All right, so this is the fourth piece of advice and it's not really along the same category, but Amazon is a good resource if you're just trying to start out and get established. Amazon has service technicians, they have control system technicians, they have maintenance technicians, they have a whole spectrum of maintenance there and they can't fill the jobs. So the reason they can't fill the jobs is you work at an Amazon warehouse, you have to walk around a lot and it seems to be tedious, somewhat boring work. Um, everything is super standardized which is good for Amazon, but it makes the, the job a little bit more boring. Um, so if you're kind of stuck, you can't find a job, figure out what staffing agency hires people for Amazon in your area and apply at that staffing agency. And um, they have skills tests. You have to do written tests for Amazon. And if you pass the test, you're gonna get the job. So that's just my fourth little piece of advice is if you're stuck, you can't find a job, look at Amazon. It's not the best job, it's not the best experience, but you can have work that is closely related to the job you're looking for on your resume for a big company. Um, if you're stuck, look at Amazon. So there's four little tips and tricks to helping you get established as an instrumentation and control technician. I stand by the career. I think it is a great career. Um, the pool of candidates is very low. Um, depending on where you work, the job duties might differ a little bit, but you're gonna be working on interesting high-tech machines and automation and instrumentation. You're gonna be troubleshooting, you're gonna be using your brain, you're gonna be using your brain and you're gonna be using your hands and you're gonna be doing different stuff every day. So I highly suggest you look into, you know, degrees in your area, look into this career. If you're kind of stuck, maybe you're in your, you know, you're a little older, or you're in your mid twenties, you're looking for a career change. Look into instrumentation, look into industrial maintenance, look into these blue collar industrial jobs. They pay pretty good. And depending on what you do, um, there, you know, there's different duties, different levels of physical activity, but I think that instrumentation for me is the best choice in these, in this, you know, industrial spectrum of maintenance. So, uh, yeah, feel free to look at my other videos and I wish all of you the best of luck and I hope you enjoyed the content. Thank you.